Delicious. Why is this in here? Throwing this away. Does somebody else want this? There's a pack of sun-made sour lemon flavored mm. golden raisins that have been sitting there <laughs> all week. Flavor? Maltic acid, dried orange peel, sulfur dioxide. Seems great. <laughs> uh, happy Friday. <laughs> Helmet's brain is like, does it make sense? Do you see a path for it to be a good Psychonauts mental world? Uh. There's pretty consistent complaints that the game is not Psychonautical enough right now. It has all kinds of crazy water gameplay uh, that needs a little bit more time to bake. The stress has been a roller coaster. Process on the team and how we work together. You the flight attendant on this puzzle pilot? Uh, in what we're calling currently pilot areas. The pilots were cool, because it's like we saw progress. Go team, making a good video game. Who wants, to, who wants to do this meeting so we can be not in this meeting? This so. is, hey, this is a great, wonderful meeting. This is the meeting we all get to come together after meeting. our sprint. Sure. It's like the one meeting I'm actually like, totally cool with. Look, Aaron said he's totally cool with this meeting. It's a nice, happy oh, meeting. Oh, well, as long as Aaron's. It's a nice, happy meeting Aaron's. where we all get to show our work and how much the video game has improved, and we love it. Um, um, so, without further ado, so we are done with pilots. Yay! Yay. All right. All right. Um, I heard Devin say playing it the other day that the things in the game that were bad are not that bad anymore. It was really wow. high praise. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's oh. art things everywhere. Oh. Would you say it's 200% better than last sprint or 300% better? Um, I need those metrics. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm even more excited that post pilot is to bring all of these sectors together into that true vertical slice. Mm -hmm. Like the things you have to achieve to be a level in Psychonauts is like all this good platforming and stuff, but also like try and make it something people haven't seen in the game before. Have it completely tell somebody's emotional journey in the landscape, you know, have it feel right narratively have it really be surprising and fresh. So a lot of pressure to be original in the level. Do you find yourself trying to explain this to James every time you see him in the hallway? <laughs> Do you think, why James? We're also re-kicking off the Bob Z and Helmet levels this sprint um, with some new level teams, basically the way that... Uh... The Helmet one? I mean, I literally have to step back and say you can do it. It's not like I have a choice. Were you involved in the first pass on the helmet stuff? Yeah, <laughs> that was so long ago. Mm -hmm. that, was such a, that was like the first thing we worked on, I think. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there it is, there it is. Wait, go back. Look up. <laughs> and that was like the uh, Viking opera yeah. style. <laughs> yeah. James worked on it first. And they, that was James' very first level. It was, it was, and that was a lot to ask. We put James far out of his depth mm -hmm. in those levels um, as a person who never really built levels before. Mm. I don't think I appreciated how hard that was going to be. To, to, I mean, I think even people who have made tons of levels before and are veteran game designers or level designers or level artists, like Psychonauts brain levels, are incredibly hard. Mm -hmm. And making the first one in that position I think was a 100% not a fair mission to send him on. <laughs> well, this is his first time designing these kind of levels. You know, he's, he was our, our junior um, 
level designer and put into a weird position of like doing a process we haven't done before, a project leader we haven't had before, um, and really put on the spot because you know some of the first levels we ever reviewed were his, and you have a lot of people in the room. And he, I think he's actually been pretty resilient for someone who's put under that kind of pressure, you know. Um, I probably would have run out of the room in tears. <laughs> First, he's a brain without a body. Uh, so when you encounter a helmet, does everybody know the background of that? When you encounter a helmet, you're trying to get a, bro bo a brain to go into Nick's body so that you can get Nick to let you in the mail room. Um, it is kind of a shame, though, because I played through the old content, and I actually really enjoyed it quite a lot. So there's, like, good stuff in there. <laughs> Did you talk to James at all about what the level used to be and the direction it was going in, just to sort of get his thoughts and feedback on it? Uh, no, he was he was pretty cool about it. We talked a little bit about what worked, what didn't. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, okay, we can do it like a bunch of different ways. I think some of the mistakes were from um, just it being the first one of those things that we we built and not knowing what the hell we were doing mm -hmm. uh, and not knowing how much direction to give a team versus. Um, White space. Mm -hmm. and I think I really erred on the side of giving a lot of white space. There was a lot of things to figure out, um, and I think you know what we learned from there, and what I learned from there is like the amount of direction that is needed up front to be more successful. So um, we are going to be getting Peter Chan. Good news, oh. bad. Good news. Oh yeah, no, I heard about that. Yeah. Good news, bad news. Good news. Peter Chan's going to come on board for one last uh, hurrah, Woo! and he's going to basically run a concept yeah. for like two to three weeks. All right. So. Um, a couple things we're trying to do with level kickoffs now is to um, be a little bit more clear about kind of like the high level creative promises and direction that we're hoping the team kind of delivers on of like what is the stuff that is kind of the creative uh, challenge for y'all to figure out. Helmet is, uh, at least as we discussed, there is a pitch for it that is somewhat specific in here. Um, I don't think it's 100% yet. It's kind of off the presses. I think the biggest thing, like we kind of understand what Helmet's problem is in the structure, uh, but in terms of like where you are and the setting of the level, it's something that there's a proposal in here, open to other ideas, but we also have to like have a two-week concept period where we figure that thing out, figure out something we all love, and, and move on. Inside, and this is sort of the, the actual pitch that we have on the table right now, Inside's Help Us Mind is like some sort of outdoor music festival or amphitheater, and you need to sort of move between the different places where the senses are, who literally are like surreal, crazy noses and eyeballs and hand people or whatever, um, and convince each of them to work with you, to work with each other again, to put on the show. It wasn't so much, it was uh, more concept than art. Yeah, um, it was Peter Chan concept, and then also uh, just some narrative direction um, you know, from Tim and Zach, and we, you know, messed around with like, what are the senses like? Like, talked about it a little bit, like a, it's yeah, like a prog rock band, like Emerson, Lake and Palmer, broken up, but also a little bit like Seven Samurai or Magnificent Seven. Like, you're getting this band back together, and you have to go find each one. And the no, the nose, no one's seen him in years, and like, um, kind of recruiting them all, convincing them all to join the cause again. Remember that first practice we had in my basement? And they're like, yeah, yeah when it was about the music, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's the high level thing of like getting the band back together just just kind of made it easier. Figuring out your iconic helmet view. Um, visual, we had talked a lot about trying to go down, because it is overwhelming, um, kind of like the Peter Max yellow submarine over overwhelming surreal visuals because it does feel like this is a level about someone who's overwhelmed by sense information mm -hmm. they don't really know how to deal with, there would be something kind of overwhelming about the visuals of the level as well. Peter Chan showed a bunch of uh, the yellow submarine stuff, and um, that was kind of a, a natural like fit with that, and I just sort of took that and ran with it. Oh, no, I have a, a question regarding uh, uh, Compton, because mm. I know like Compton and Helmet had sort of a similar like uh, general ideas about what they were going to look like, because, you know, Lisa Frick's very colorful and like, uh, are we, are we still doing that, is what I'm wondering. Like, should... I, Luckily, Compton is completely in turnaround at this point, right? Is, like, is he, or we, I, mean, I don't think we... We don't know what... We don't know what Compton's Yeah, doing. I mean, this, this has a strong visual direction with the like the Peter Max style influence that, that seems interesting, right? It, I mean, and, it seems like Compton is kind of, yeah, not on the table right now, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but, but if we did this as like Yellow Submarine, mm -hmm. we probably also would not do... Uh, Lisa Frank. Okay. These are totally Lisa fine. Frank elements in this one. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like if they seem so close, they seem yeah. like they would absorb each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you, you'd wanted to do a, um, a level based on Lisa, Lisa Frank. Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, uh, I brought up Lisa Frank to Peter Chan and, and all the other artists. And Peter was like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen this before. And it was pretty funny. Listen, Helmet is still going to be gay. And that is the most important thing is that we still... I snuck in my gay agenda into this video game. So he went on to do uh, Bob Z, which is a, um, a brain and a character that's kind of in tandem with Helmet. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bob Z was like a huge nightmare disaster where nothing worked, so we're rebooting that. Oh yeah, the Bonsai Tree. The bonsai tree. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. You did a lot of work on the Bonsai Tree, right? Ugh, it was like all placeholder. Mm -hmm. It was kind of gross that it just didn't look or come out well, I think. I was. Peter taught me when I was at university. I mm. like really looked up to him mm -hmm. and his stuff. And yeah, I remember like when we were working on the bonsai tree for for Bob Z. He like he came over and I was just showing showed him a white box, and I just like just remember the expe expression on his face, which was just like kind of blank. It's like what is this? Move it, Jeff. Someone deleted Bob Z. Okay. Someone deleted the persistence. <laughs> there are a lot of things that went wrong with Bob Z that are. So somewhat hard to pinpoint. Um, there's like visual things we just sh should have caught earlier, like a bonsai tree and like porcelain houses just like didn't make sense or work together. It was just like a bonkers combination of ideas. Like it's just impossible to sell. You know, it used to be a, a village and a bottle and then a, a bonsai tree and then all these different things. And I think that's, that's kind of how these games are made. And by these games, I mean Psychonauts games. Okay. Bob, re-kickoff, he's back. He's tan, he's rested, he's ready. He's ready to be an exciting video game level about level. a drunk guy. Um, <laughs> the main thing is he's sort of self-medicating. He's had a really hard life, he's lost a lot, and that loss has led him to sort of withdraw from people um, and to self-medicate and withdraw into himself and sort of gradually break connections with all of his loved ones. Uh, but hey, Raz, if you wanna try, sure, go ahead. And so Raz gets the ability to travel the world. Uh, as you sail around, the camera pulls out and it becomes clear that you're on a tiny little ball of uh, water with only one island. Um, in it and you can kind of go around the whole thing like a little prince kind of dealio uh, and eventually you find a cork of some kind at the top of a bottle and you can TK it off and you go inside. You go in the bottle and then the bottle is this whole little world. Yeah. Brian is in you the like bottle. it? So good. Where okay, I, keep going. <laughs> um, inside the bottle is a little mini world that represents sort of a cast off or painful memory of some loved one of Bob uh, that he sort of corked up, cast off and gotten out of his life and is no longer thinking about and it's thrown out into the sea. Um, and from a gameplay, uh, you're on a boat, you're on a tiny planet, and there's all kinds of weird water state stuff. I think the water manipulation stuff worries me a little bit. Like, yeah, it feels like do. we're doing two things that are like cool, that are unique to this level. It's like a boat and the water manipulation, and... Except in the bottles, we're not doing the boat. So in the bottles, there's nothing cool if you don't have the water <laughs> manipulation. I mean, there's no currently a cool idea in the bottles, except for it looks cool to be in a bottle. Like that feels like a, a big thing to take on, but if you treat it as like a dynamic object thing where you can like pull away blobs of water and do some sort of thing with them, roll it somewhere, I don't know, like TK it around and splash it into stuff. Like that seems like we already kind of have some of the tech in place to do that without it being like a major flooded, not flooded ice zone. Now it's water zone kind of thing. <laughs> and it's hard because sometimes I'm just sitting there quietly in the meetings because I'm thinking like I'm just waiting to be blown away by some idea and that's you don't want to be that jerk who's kind of like mm, I haven't seen anything I like yet you know like <laughs> but sometimes that is the way you're feeling about the level you know I feel like maybe we didn't effectively post-mortem the first failure because we have the same water thing that we had last time that really tripped us up I still don't know what to do with it. In our in our kickoff meeting, we talked a lot about like water and water interaction, which is just sort of hard to do with Raz when there's been such like. Right. We go down that rabbit hole. It could be months of R and D. Uh, the team. That's that's you people. That's you folks. That's you fine folks. Um, 
So yeah, Jeremy and James, and then Gianna will be joining next week uh, and jump right into it. We're also getting a new concept artist who's gonna be working with us on Bubsy, I think, which is very exciting. Not mentioned this maybe before, but by the way, we film a lot of stuff here at the company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, re I worked at Harmonix for about six years. And uh, yeah. And you work with Zach at Harmonix? I did for Around. like a second, yeah. but we didn't really cross paths. We didn't work on a project together. Yeah, but. I looked at I looked at him. I saw him. <laughs> I do every day. We all gaze. We all gaze at Zach, whether we work at it with him or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. So I've always loved games. That's where my, me and my father got to curse at each other a lot. <laughs> One day when we were playing, we were playing uh, Goldeneye, and I killed him, and he's like, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Gigi, I, I always tell everyone about her. I'm like, we hired this chick from Philly, and she'll be like, shit, an F-bomb, so she's so loud, you can hear her across the studio. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot more women. Space is our new animator. Janice Bell, welcome to Double Fine Productions. Please stand up, please stand up. I gotta shake your hand. Hello. I haven't even talked to you yet. Hello, welcome to the company. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. The bathroom is a lot more crowded. I'm really sad about this. I'm like happy that there's more women. I'm like, yeah, women game developers, that's awesome. But I like having a bathroom too. Women take longer in the bathroom. It's a common problem. But when I learned about Double Fine was in college when someone uh, showed me uh, Grim Fandango. And I was like, this is cool. I like this. And then from there it was like, oh yeah, cool. They have cool stories and like fun art style and it's like silly and not like a serious man that needs to shoot everybody. Awesome. James, I'm sorry, there's already been one question asked. Whisper, what was the question? It's about self-driving cars. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, all right. <laughs> Psychonauts hired a lot of people, and so there's a whole new generation of people that um, are new to the company, and they're so uh, enthusiastic. I'm like really, really excited to be here. Full Throttle was like my jam growing up. Played that game like a million times. Day of the Tentacle, iconic stuff for me, so. Uh, and uh, Joshua and Jerry and Faith. It's great to have a mix of people who have been here since 1800s, and then there's brand new people like Gigi. You have to display it on your desk. It's like a I, had, I was the last new person, so now you... And then I see my stupid picture on their desk. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. This was given to uh, Tucker when he first came on. So since then, okay. it's been going to all the new people. Yeah, all right. Yeah. That's, that is... What has happened? He is so pretty. So, yeah, what you a know, handsome like, man. Look into his eyes. It's just like okay. You can yeah. optionally. And they're gonna think I did that. They're like, yeah, Tim started this weird tradition where they put his face on their desks. It's not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's obviously a fan, a fan of mine. It's gonna be great. Thank you. Yeah, You're, it's official now. How, how else is the rest of the game right now? Is it is it super like funny? We, and... I don't think we even know. Okay. Unfortunately, like the only level that's far this long is Cassie, and there's very little story represented in there. Which one's Cassie? Books. Books. I want to talk about also the water mechanics. Because um, we'll be we'll be discussing that Tuesday, right? Yes. Okay. If we like... don't walk out of that meeting on Tuesday with like this is what we're going to make our level out of. I'm going to flip out. This is probably too crazy but the so he's near water and then the water actually turns into a a person and is like ah <laughs> that was so stupid <laughs> and he's like ah I don't like you and he's like oh I'll be my friend <laughs> saggy tits <laughs> yeah maybe it's it's I feel out. like we're gonna have a good presentation <laughs> on Tuesday <laughs> yeah. and then can you help me find my guitar and you go into this weird trippy world and there's towers and the moat came with you, and he teaches you time bubble, and you climb to the top of the tower to get the sweet guitar. And Raz plays the guitar and goes, Bring! and we uh, wipe. And he's like, thanks, man. And he goes, Bring! and the moat like sort of freaks out a little bit. And he's got eyeballs. 
And he's like, whoa, what happened? Uh, I guess we need to find the rest of your band. To the van! <laughs> so, Emily in particular on that level, she'll do a ton of explorations and then you know when you know. It's like it just hit, throw it on, everybody was like, yep, that's it. Um, and we have those moments here. It's like you, you'll do some exploration and then somebody will be like, yep, that's it, that's, that's the right call. Emily was really awesome at helping us put together those pitches um, and visualizing what the level is actually going to be like, uh, including the entire like arc of the narrative within our brain. And you open this map and you like zoom in, boop, and you boop, 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 boop. Oh, so you play on the map? Maybe. That sounds great. Okay. I love it. Okay. <gasps> oh, that warms my heart. I'm glad, I'm glad, that's what I want. That's what I want in this game. I want emotion and story and feelings and all that like touchy-feely stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't care about the jumping as much. I just, want, I just want a good story and like weirdness and to be surprised. That's what I want in this game. The original idea was that Helmet's level was going to be a musical level, so it's something that had already been talked about. And in fact, um, there had been talk at various points about having Jack Black play Helmet. Um, is that be cool? Yeah, so because it seems like this is leading up to a musical number and there would need to be a song at the end. Um, so I'm sure it's how they would use all these instruments in a song. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing good. Doing good? <laughs> yeah. Just working on Helmet right now. It's going well. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's so chill right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got out. He got out of that helmet meeting. The one time where like we we did the like this is what we're gonna do, this is the structure. And and, and everyone was like, yeah, go. And then he was so amazed. He's like, it went well. <laughs> What's going on? You're learning all the secrets. Are you, are you still going to be friends with everyone after the doc? We'll be friends with you. Okay, good. Thankfully, uh, it was such a strong direction, and like Emily kind of had a really good idea of what to make, so um, whatever she made was like, it fit really well, so I just kind of built off that. It, it kind of worked out. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna try to do this in a couple different ways. Um, and then Tazio did this with mesh, and it's kind of another way to do it, so it's like a 3D thing that does it. Yeah. Um, I had already talked to Tazio too, and he's, gonna, he's actually making this so that the silhouette yeah. maintains its shape, so right. you don't get that like shrinking feeling to the end of it. So. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's working on some scripts, so we can start testing it at some point. Yeah. He's kind of busy with a bunch of stuff. We could set it up in such a way that we have interior lines and texture, yeah. and then just just do exterior lines. Um, you just kind of double the geo, and then set the normals to be reversed, and mm -hmm. that's how the outline shows up. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, like the stuff Tazio has been doing is great. Like, there's a lot of Tazio in here that is making my life a lot easier. Have you guys talked to Tazio yet <laughs> about him being the only VFX artist for a while? Uh, Jeremy Mitchell is going to be leaving Double Fine. It is with sadness that I have to state this. Uh, to be going elsewhere, uh, I don't even know. You'll have to ask Jeremy. I don't even know if you want to share that. Not my business. Um, the beard stays, Jeremy. Yeah. You go. <laughs> the beard stays. We're gonna take the beard and we're gonna staple to the back wall. No, no, we quit on the next FX artist. Oh, yeah! <laughs> um, so Tazio's in for a lot of work when he gets back on Monday. <laughs> um, before I left, I was like, I, I, did the I don't know what's the lighting. Yeah. yeah, I think you should just pick his I brain and then see if anything you like. We've done a lot since then. Yeah. Certainly by next week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, just yeah, keep me updated and all that stuff. Cheers. Sorry? You already knew Jeremy I didn't actually. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's a bummer, you know. It's been it's been really nice. Just to, like for me learning a lot about game effects, just having Jeremy who's just like you know, from my perspective pretty fucking irreplaceable. So it's fine.
figure it out. But yeah, the, uh, the upside is the Houdini license is all mine. <laughs> I think it's definitely overwhelming. That's understandable. Um, VFX hardest are hard to find, but I think he's up to the challenge and he accepts that it's an opportunity to grow. I'm fine, I'm fine. And uh, you know, become better. Mm -hmm. Tim, no. Whatever. He was hugging a large doll. Yeah. That can, might I take can, a while. <laughs> I can understand. I can understand. Should we reschedule? Uh, <laughs> are there things that are a surprise for Tim here? Uh, well, we, we're going to show the mechanic. Okay. She seemed at least sold on. That's keeping it warm for you. Thank you. Our mechanic that we talked about last week. Um, air plants. So, oh, I found a fruit. All right. You've got a crazy plant. It's a Japanese watermelon. It's like a multicolored, cool looking strawberry. Oh no, oh, water. Oh, it's the water. You can't go in the Why water. Why does he always forget that? But what if I could? Whoa. Whoa. So it's just like in Second Up 1. Yeah. God damn it, Andy. I would say it's an evolution. Control, it's an evolution Andy. of something we introduced as a concept in Second Up 1. That was a harsh one from Andy. What happens at the end? You just have a little narrative thing at the end, or there's a... Uh, so this is, you chase after this plant that has taken your mom. Uh, but as you get smaller and smaller, you end up in a sink, and in the sink is that is dirty that. dishes level. Dirty dishes level. Remember, we want yeah, a dirty you dishes end up in level. A sink? Yeah. Tim, how are you feeling? You look very thoughtful. <laughs> feeling. How am I feeling? How am I feeling? Aside from this meeting, how are you? How are you feeling? Are you excited about the level? Are you excited about the level? I'm very excited about the level. Me too. Then I, I like the effect of that. Um, that little plant going through all. I mean, I'd love to. I always, you know, I always love to see like an example puzzle to like prove out that. Can do something cool with it, you know, placing it places to solve puzzles, and you're putting it on a moving platform where you're doing, you know, side blasting it. I don't know, you're doing things with it. Do you use it as a tool? I think that's the cool part of it. Cool. Okay, I have to sneak off to another meeting. All right. You guys can hang out. Have fun at it. Okay, bye. Uh, yeah, well, when we did the new um, level for Flow, I believe. Wait. Bulleted reminder Jeff. of what we're looking for. Did Tim seem excited? You guys can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I find it him really very hard to read now. Way more complex than really sure. So, How is it um, presenting to Zach and Tim and getting feedback from them? Uh, it's a weird meeting. Like if the thing is, let's say, a piece of fruit and the solutions work around that fruit, is that okay? You know, like if you're in helmet and it's you see I'm, it. I'm not an approving body here. It's going to work or not work for the sure, game. Sure. Like people are going to play it and buy it and it's going to like, they'll understand it or they won't. This isn't a matter of I personally give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Sure. There's like a little bit of pressure, you know, and you don't know like what to expect. <laughs> I wish that there was a little more um, decisions, like hard decisions. There's been a little bit of like, well, who who decides if Bob, if this should be, you know, whatever, like the, a door, like we were talking about it the other day, like, if it's a door. Yeah, uh, the, the kind of uh, sled dog um, fish pulling the, the door along. Because you could which have is like also pretty fun. multiple pretty fun fish. Yeah. The boat's a door, and then we'll, we decided that two weeks from now, and now we're bringing up the door again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, does anybody not want to do the door? The door boat? Yeah. I think the door functioned as a way to justify why doesn't Bob just get on the boat by himself? No, I know, and it's also cute, but I also don't know that that needs a justification. Like, Bob probably just doesn't want to go find those memories. So I don't know that, like, we have to do the door thing to explain that. And it's like, why, wait, what's happening? Who, why can't, who made the decision? Like, I think if you guys are still excited about being a door, it should be a door. Yeah, you I think do so. That. It just is. I, yeah, I think it should be a door, because it's cool. I'll make the decision as a fucking door, you know, whatever. But like, you know, so there's a lot of like that kind of nebulous stuff going around. You're in like a clearing of a field or something with some trees and yeah, that kind of, that something to, to, that to is very obscure that a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not gonna have- We're well, not having trees. Yeah, it's, it's that, supposed to be it's, dead, yeah. kind of okay. dry. It's this, like. it's gonna be like close to this concept. Okay. Shit, I probably should have said that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
would have another potted plant idea. Well, it is a potted plant, I guess, but also sometimes you can't pick it up, so sometimes it's not a potted plant, I guess. I mean, can the same plant just be rooted in the ground when it's stationary so. and then in a plant so. and you can move it? Or in a, in a pot, I mean? Yeah. I guess so. Almost every time you go in, there's you're kind of like giving a little bit of a pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have like a structure to that pitch to show them, here's where we started with the idea, we rolled with it, this is where we're going. It worked on my machine. <laughs> oh, <it's the> <laughs> there we go. And then Time Bubble itself is a power that um, we're still kind of exploring the uses for it. Uh, I figure here is where you have this uh, kind of like river going, where there's some like fish that are jumping out and they're actually H-poles. So what you have to do is time bubble them while they're in the air, or at least one of them while they're in the air so you can jump across the, the path. My philosophy on learning in general is, you know, we're all kind of standing on the shoulders of giants, right? And we do kind of try to follow the Zelda rule or, you know, the, the Nintendo rule, I guess it is, which is like, teach it in a safe place where the player can't fail and then make them use it to progress out of that space and pulls you out into this trippy world out here. And you find out that you've been in a vault the whole time. Um, I try to base a lot of my design and layouts in, in the real world because the more connections you can make to the real world, the less you have to suspend disbelief. And like you say, oh yeah, that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? And you know, especially through the gray boxing stages, like the ideas are a little bit more nebulous. And so it's really helpful to have a strong kind of idea. So currently I have the nose breathing. Um, mm. It's breathing you in, and oh. and then it takes a second, and then it breathes you out. Okay, cool. It's, anyway, so the idea is it pulls you in and pulls you out. <laughs> Gazoon height, exactly. So, um, uh, Josh is different. It's a lot easier working with Josh, I guess, because he's like more open to feedback and changing things, I guess. Like, um, Jeremy and Emily helped me quite a lot. Um, kind of like fit into the role. Being a new person at the studio, they also help like help me understand the process that we go through, mm -hmm. which I th understand is kind of unique per brain, similar to how each brain is unique, um, because they each have unique needs, uh, and the I guess like kind of the ideas and talents that are on each brain team, uh, each level team, uh, kind of shape that brain, mm -hmm. right? And so I think we have like a really strong like. Uh, I guess just like collaborative effort here. It's great, <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe out there? So you have your, your quest now, you gotta go retrieve the memories. <clears throat> you grab the door, use it as a boat, you <laughs> sail off. Um, as you were sailing off, uh, <laughs> fish, and birds that have like beer bottle stuff with those plastic rings will mm, come up mm -hmm. and, and talk to you to tell you more. Uh, these are like good moments to like have uh, stories here. Uh, you get to your first bottle and you go in and you are greeted into a beer bog is like kind of what we've been calling it. I like all those things that I saw and that like all those little details and stuff were really awesome. I thought that was really nice. Um, I love like I love the little fish with the rings and the little <laughs> tiny island and the martini glasses and the and the uh, beer bog and the door boat I think is interesting and then Gigi's our, one of our newest people and just seeing her storyboards come out and it's just that um, that little touch of like you know Bob's or uh, Raz is on the little door on the ocean a little fish comes up to talk to him but the fish has a little like uh, uh, six pack ring around his neck and it's just like ah oh, little. Didn't have to draw that little six pack ring, but she did, and that's what means so much to me. <laughs> I feel like that's the same way the player feels. Like, mm -hmm. oh, they didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's so nice they did that. Okay. <laughs> Move over, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> I don't know, Gigi hit the ground running. She's doing real well. Hey. She's uh, very positive and fun and just that energy of like, yeah, let's do this. I want more of that. It does you. 
I got you a present. So I'm leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow's my last day. Uh, okay. Here you go. Oh shit, dude. <laughs> I think it's on backward. This is going really well. Put that on your head. I think it's made for a smaller. I mean, I have a, gi I have a giant skull. I feel beautiful. Hey, what's up? All my shit over the development is gonna go way easier now. <laughs> Are you guys doing a skit? Are we interrupting a thing? No. Yeah, no, no, this is perfect. A skit? Are you guys doing a skit? <laughs> no, it's always a skit over here. Oh, the tiny eyes is better. Yeah, so, something like that. Like, yeah, yeah. the massive arms breaks oh, that feeling of this little thing that Got wisps it. around. We definitely want Because it doesn't do melee attacks. It doesn't punch yeah, you. Yeah, it doesn't. So no. it's true. We definitely want it to flow. I like these barely there arms. Mm. I'm just like, maybe more so. <laughs> it's, it's like that uh, one shrine quest where you're bringing the bubble all the way out the long, twisty island in Breath of the Wild. You guys are saying this doesn't look fun. <laughs> Man. This is not Roger hard. Ebert was right, is what I'm <laughs> starting to feel. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, in that hollow, we're going to be careful about you being able to see the seeds. Whoa, the neat. areas in the camera where you can't see where it is. I like how these are developing, yeah. Let's see what just happened. Neat. Oh, shoot. What? What? Oh, man. Did you just blow your mind? Did your mind get blown? A little bit. Like a big chunk of my brain just got blown off. And then... Uh, just recently, I went to a level review for Bob Z, and they you know, they have that water repelling like thing growing in the level, and I was like, "This seems really neat. This is really um, this is going to be a lot of fun." And so it was nice to be able to feel that way about that level after the two years of of um, <sighs> reviewing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, the bubble going by at the other angle, I was kind of like, "Oh, I think the bubble's actually a red herring almost in a way." I mean, is it good confusing or bad confusing? Like, I like that it was like getting really weird. Well, like, I, I like that it's getting really weird too. Are we saying it's cool sometimes when the water is banging different gravity than you? It, we th are. Then it why aren't, can't other things like pendulums and stuff be? Because there's weird? two different gravities happening at the same time. Do you think it would fix it to just make everything all crazy and <laughs> no rules just? I mean, I was, I was hoping this was progressing to a world where you just like almost like a crazy Venn diagram of bubbles where you have no idea what's going on. In short, I mean, you're really confused and you're like, what the? I don't know. That's cool. Now you're totally upside down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Start the right. music. Great. Start, Start the music. The music. <laughs> I'm gonna have <laughs> stuff to do. I got Thanks, Tim. Bye. <laughs> Stupid. And the concept now is a lot cooler, I think. And that bubble mechanic looks awesome. Like, I think it's in a good place. And then, like, hopefully this cool Compton thing works out, too. Okay, this is where it gets crazy. Compton. Uh, so Compton has been, like, on the back burner for a long time. We haven't kicked it off. We didn't know what we were going to do. We've been talking and talking about what we're going to do for it. Uh, and the idea came up of, like, wait a minute. We had already sort of built, like, a whole crazy level using Psychonauts gameplay, and it was really cool and everybody really liked it, and it's just sort of sitting around. So the idea now is to actually take The Gods Must Be Hungry as a core concept, where you're like jumping around in this giant sort of kitchen environment and building a supersized meal for some sort of angry thing. Um, and that's gonna be the base of the Compton level. So uh, so we're gonna have uh, Asif, because that was his, his Amnesia Fortnite level, uh, or project, um, he's gonna work on that with Will and Emily. Um, and so that will be an exciting uh, part of our video game now, which is gonna be cool, so yay! yay.
powerful and cool. So this is this is good. I like I like this direction a lot. Let's try something else now. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like it. I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. What if he's not an alcoholic? What if he's a chocoholic? Yeah, everything's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Note from the publisher, that's a little heavy, you guys. <laughs> I'm not making him a chocoholic.